All right, guys, it is uh, 7.03 on Thursday, January 9th. I'd like to call to order special meeting number 355 of the Wachusa Regional School District Committee. Uh, today we are being broadcast and recorded through Rutland TV. Uh, the following committee members are joining us via Zoom tonight. Uh, as I call your name, if you can please confirm that you can hear us and that we can hear you. Um, Sue Valentine? Aye. Thank you. Asuma Silva? Yes, I'm here. Dana Lorway? Yes. Scott Runstrom? Hello. Malay Gustafson? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, we had public hearing listed on our agenda. Is there anyone here to speak for public hearing? Thank you. Um, Chair's opening remarks. Thank you all for being here. As you all know, our budget is um, one of our most in charge, important charges of our committee. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time tonight. Um, tonight, senior Hayden Pierce was is participating in the music concert at the high school, so he cannot be here to present his uh, design for the coach Brian Wallace trail. He asked me to continue along with the motion um, so that he has the chance to get started before um, and be able to complete it before the school year is out. You all received a copy of the design in your last packet emailed. Um, so with that, I would accept a motion to approve the sign design for the coach Brian Wallace trail. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved by Linda and seconded by Lauren. Is there any discussion? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Um, Mike, you want to start this one? Uh, sure. Dennis, yes. Meter, yes. Lavoie, yes. Kaminsky, abstain. Woodland, yes. Gordon, yes. Longville, yes. Kirschenbaum, yes. Sam and Garrett, yes. Brennan, yes. Uh, Scott? Rydstrom, yes. Um, Sue? Valentine, yes. Malia? Gustafson, yes. Dana? Laura, yes. And Asma? Roba, yes. And Chair Epstein's the motion passes. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I would now accept a motion to enter into executive session to discuss contract negotiations with all bargaining units. As the Chair does deems that a discussion in public session would have a detrimental effect on the district's bargaining position and to return to public session. So move. Second. Second. Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> Moved by Linda and seconded by Linda. <laughs> <laughs> roll call vote, please. Dennis, yes. Meter, yes. Lavoie, yes. Kaminsky, yes. Woodland, yes. Gavardin, yes. Longville, yes. Kershaw, yes. Sam yes. Brennan, yes. Scott? Oh, sorry. Rodstrom, yes. Malia? Gustafson, yes. Dana? Lorway, yes. Sue? Valentine, yes. Asima? Silva, yes. Chair of Saints, the motion passes, and we'll now move into executive session. Okay. Um, just for the public information, um, Member Otmar has joined us remotely as well. Um, I would now accept a motion to approve the FY24 appropriation in the amount of $116,208,797 and assessments to the member towns of Holden for $35,455,140, for Paxton $7,477,459, for Princeton, $5,641,519. For Rutland, $15,411,321. For Sterling, $13,055,104. So moved. Second. Or maybe I can amend it. Uh, you missed one of the uh, amounts for Holden was misread. So do we need to amend it? I heard thirty-five million four hundred and seventy-five thousand one hundred and forty. Oh, okay, I heard four hundred seventy-seven. So I just wanted to make sure it was correct. <laughs> okay, would anyone like me to reread the numbers? It was just the Holden one. The rest were fine. Okay, for clarification, the Holden number is thirty-five million four hundred seventy-five thousand one hundred forty dollars. So you. moved. Second. Okay, moved by Linda, seconded by Laura. Um, 
We'll move to discussion, but um, Dr. Riley has a statement. So I am requesting that the school committee vote in support of the FY24 budget as presented. I believe this budget not only represents a true accounting of the district's operating costs for the first time in several years, but it's an important first step in supporting the evolving needs of our students. All of the recommendations in this budget are in line with the discussions we had at our retreat in January. They are also supported by data and best practice. There are numerous budget requests that have not been fulfilled at this time, and I want to be clear that this is only the first step in our journey to address a myriad of challenges across the district. As we embark upon the strategic planning process, it is my hope that the pathway for us to improve the student experience will become more clear and defined. It is only when we have developed an aligned approach to delivering essential services that we can truly start to make decisions on how to best allocate our resources. And I thank you all for your consideration. Okay. And we'll open the floor for discussion. George? So I have a question for the superintendent. So what specific steps are planned and what, are, what is the timeline of the changes in which this is just the first step? Well, I think the first step is going to be for us to get um, a strategic plan consultant to be working with us and get that plan developed. My hope, um, my hope was to have the strategic plan probably finished before um, we entered into the next school year. But realistically, I'd say working with a consultant, it looks like uh, a more reasonable, not a reasonable timeline, but a more likely timeline where we'd be finishing that process possibly in December. My hope would be is if we had the plan in place by that time, it could start to inform how we start to plan future budgets. Um, you know, I'm serious when I talk about us needing to give the town's plan time to plan if we're going to be asking for additional resources. The other piece that um, we honestly haven't got to yet is trying to make sure that we've uncovered any efficiencies that we do have in the budget. You know, I, I had said this when we presented to the towns uh, a week ago Monday. I, you know, I don't want to be asking for additional funds if we can fund something by reallocating money that, you know, supports something that we don't need anymore. I also feel like, you know, it's important that we don't go down roads like, I'll give you an example. Right now, the district is inconsistent, I feel, in how we are uh, approaching co-teaching. You know, it's a model that we talk about in special education, but it means different things in different buildings. Um, and it also has not been implemented with any sort of fidelity across the district. I think it's really important that we work with a new special education director to find out what is their vision, how do they feel like our, our students are going to be best serviced before we commit to adding positions or, or at, at particular schools or elsewhere and, and, and have a grip on how we're going to provide services. Similar with, um, you know, really any initiative that we look at. Are we seriously going to consider, you know, um, adding health teachers? I don't know. We should be looking at what that would mean, how many teachers, how would that, you know, move forward? How would it benefit students? Those are all things that I'm not sure we have answers for right now. Um, you know, when I look at some of the things that have been requested, I can understand why they've all been requested. And I could even say, like, yep, I, I, I think that could help that particular building. And so I certainly am not saying they don't have value. I just am not sure, as a district, we've <coughs> had time to look at these things sufficiently to have an aligned plan. One of the big problems when I got hired is we had five towns, 13 different schools, and you know, very varied experiences depending on where you went to school and what's in, in what town and what school. And I feel like one of the things we need to do is have time to develop an aligned approach about this is how we're going to provide this service and this is how we can implement it with um, equity across the district. And so my hope, though, is that that, that framework that would be in place by, by December. So, so just to clarify, so it would be the you know, strategic plan and this analysis and then working with consultants or? The strategic plan, typically what you do is you, you put out a, um, um, in a, a request, an RFP, and then the, the cult consultants help you in that process. You know, it usually typically starts with reaching out to stakeholders, looking at different models. Where it would start for us, to be honest with you, is a portrait of a graduate. And so I think one of the things, um, and this is a nice thing that we could do in Wachusett, is what do we want our students when they leave the high school 
to have? What do we want their education to look like? You know, do we want to, you know, we've spoken at times about, you know, are there more opportunities for interactions in the community? Um, you know, are we looking to develop um, students who maybe have a different skill set than we, we, are, we are promoting today? You know, that's, that's where it honestly starts, is that portrait of the graduate, and then talking about how do we build that from pre-K all up until grade 12. So that, but, but that's again, that's the strategic plan. Yep. Yep. And, and start, and honestly, what I would say, I think where they would start with us is, what are you hoping your students, when they leave what you said high school, what do they have? What skill set? What experiences? Right. Things of that nature. Thank you. Okay. I have Linda, then Matt. Uh, so I just wanted to say a lot of what you just covered actually goes into what I was going to um, say about with in regards to this budget. So I'll keep it brief. Um, I have appreciated how uh, thoughtful and clar uh, clear the presentations have been through this first year, um, uh, your first year here, what you said. Um, it's not even a full calendar year. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, w I feel like the presentations that we have been shown at this committee have walked us all the way through to this point, that the decisions of what could be addressed this year versus needing to be addressed soon after, uh, I think have been presented to us throughout the me meetings throughout this year. And I appreciate that uh, building of evidence that I think we had been lacking in previous years. Um, and I... I uh, just wanted to put my statement of support there. Okay, Matt? Yeah. So, a couple of questions. Um, I appreciate the, the desire to have a new leader of special education and help guide the vision. What I'm a little bit concerned about is there were seven, I counted them, seven positions amongst all the schools requested for special ed. Um, and not one of those is, is filled. And I'm not really sure that you need an administrator to support the needs that principals are telling what they need at schools. And I look at this as an impact to every student across the district because we're focusing on, on general ed teachers and we're ignoring a population that statistically the gap has grown between our special ed and our achievers. So to me, that's the number one data point we should be looking at is, what is the quality and the output of education? And our data says that that gap is growing. So my question mm -hmm. is, if we're ignoring those positions in the budget and you hire somebody and they say we need those positions, then what? Well, I think, where I have confidence is the positions that we're moving forward with. When we look at the class sizes, I feel like they will have an impact, um, hopefully for all students as well. And when we look at special education, I would agree with you, you know, when we look at our data, it's our high needs population, special education, English learners, and low socioeconomic uh, status families, um, where our kids are struggling most. What I don't want to do is to be trying to push resources in without forethought. Like I know principals are advocating for positions and I do feel like our special education system, it's in need of a major overhaul. But it's hard when it's site-based and, and like I, I gave an example on uh, co-teaching. The desire for some principals is for us to move towards a co-teaching model. The problem though, as a district, it's like many of our initiatives, we, it's, it's not aligned across the district. It, does, it means different things for different teachers. And the practice, like our special education in my mind, it, it, it really truly is in need of an overhaul and there isn't a consistent approach to it. And so what I'm trying to be mindful of for a lot of these positions, not just the special education teacher, is not just throw people at a problem that in a lot of ways may be systemic in both our approach um, and then also perhaps how it's supported in the building. But it's not always about, and I, I think this is why, I, how I'm trying to come at all this, it's not always about hiring people. It's trying to hire the right people in the right places and give them the right support so that it's successful in supporting kids. Um, does it, 
does you, when you raise that point, does it resonate with me? Yeah, it does. And I wish, I wish I could, every single position that people ask for, I wish I could fill. Um, and can I say to you with a thousand percent confidence that we shouldn't be adding a couple of special education teachers? No, I, I, I can't. My guess is we should be adding some special education uh, teachers. I just don't have the same data that I have for these other, other positions. And I definitely don't have the same level of confidence that that department um, is aligned and focused on the best way how we should be approaching how to educate those students. And so um, I'm not OK. Like, if you ask me what troubles me, it's, there is so much work to do. There are so many positions that I feel like we need to support and add moving forward. But I also have very low confidence that, that I know in special education what those positions are. Would I want to, if there's a possibility, and here's the difficulty, if, if there's opportunity to add additional positions, do I think that that's one of the areas that we need to look at seriously? Yes. You know, I would love, though, for it to be supported by, again, a plan, a vision that has been um, you know, communicated and can be executed because right now I don't think we have that. So I have a, a second question. I appreciate that answer. I do think that you might run into a challenge of candidates looking at that position saying, you're asking me to build a vision, but there's no budget to support additional positions. And is that really a position where I can go in and change things versus inherent um, problems? So I just want us to think about what we're selling from, from that perspective. Yep. The other question is, and I think this leads to the learning loss that we've seen in our district, the social and emotional issues. Um, prior administration focused a lot on supporting remote learners, adding positions to enhance the teacher's experience to broadcast. Have we looked at those types of positions that were primarily here for remote learning and, and thought about the student experience and where, where those are in terms of budget, et cetera? Yeah, I have met with Barry Sklar and, and know how those positions are being used. They are right now being used to support learning. Um, through technology in the schools, and those people are very busy. I feel like, again, so much of this year has been trying to build the team and honestly try to uh, gain stable footing um, as we move forward. We need to exhaust, uh, exhaustively look at every department and ask ourselves, when, when I talk about efficiencies, are we, do we have the right people to support leading, uh, to, to support learning? that are giving our students the most support that they need. Um, I would say from my conversation with Barry and looking at how those positions are being utilized, I was satisfied that they were having an impact. Do I think we have to dive deeper in all of our departments and make sure we can say absolutely yes, this is what we're doing? Yes, but part of the problem this year is, you know, eight months in, um, I can't tell you I'm, I'm grounded in the district and have a high level of confidence about every single department. Um, and that is, you know, part of the strategic planning process. What are we doing? What are our resources? And what are the visions of each other department? And how are they going to ha help, you know, build that portrait of the graduate and help us move forward in strategic planning? But it's a, it's a valid point, and we have to be asking those questions everywhere. I, I do feel like for those particular positions, you know, part of the a lot of the curriculums we're using now do have a, a component of them where they require teachers to have support to help deliver content at times. And they are, you know, um, and I do believe Barry, and I do trust Barry, um, that they are serving a function in the district to help move, move learning and teaching forward. So this is just my challenge when it comes to the budget is this committee was sold on the fact that those positions were to support remote learning, mm -hmm. and specifically the remote learning experience. When we think about a budget tonight, we're asking for additional positions. For me to support a budget, I expect oversight on that. And it's not to say that this position's worth more than another, but when we're supporting a budget for remote learning, that came with federal funding, it came with other pieces. And now I'm looking at that and I'm saying it's not impacting our students directly. 
we're not delivering any classes remotely today. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm saying they're doing. I'm talking about them delivering content, uh, supporting technology to deliver, deliver, to deliver content in our classrooms to our students who are in their classrooms. And so there are different means in how you're going to deliver content. Some of them involve technology, and so they're supporting that instruction. I don't know what was said before by the previous administration. I don't know, you know, the, the history of what positions were added and what was said when they were added. Um, I can just tell you that I would agree with the premise that we need to be looking through as many positions that we have to make sure that they are um, having an impact on our students' experience and in driving learning forward because otherwise it's not a good use of resources. Um, you know, this is a particular case where I do believe the person who, who, who um, best understands how those people are being utilized. I, I do think they're having an impact on supporting kids in their learning, and it's not in a remote, um, in a remote um, environment. You know, I'm not saying they're supporting kids remotely at home. Um, but the point is valid. Like, we have to be looking at all those things. I, 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 I agree with you. Through the chair, I just asked for a report for a follow-up on how they're being utilized mm -hmm. and, and what that impact is on, on learning, because I'd love to be able to measure that and mm -hmm. that impact. Sure. Okay. So Malaya, then Linda. All right, hopefully you can hear me because the video, the sound goes out every so often. Um, so I want to say a couple things. Um, one of my concerns actually was about the special education positions, although that is, to be clear, my concern. It hasn't been brought to me by CPEC, but um, you know, I think they're concerned overall with the new director and what their vision would be. Um, so one of my concerns is that and so I was glad to hear the superintendent say that um, you know he will continue to look at that and I hope that our new administrator whenever we have one um, will continue we'll, we'll start by looking at that and really what the structure is and, and what we need to be doing so I'm happy to hear that sorry my other comment if my voice holds out is um, that, well, I'm glad, I'm glad we're having a discussion. I have heard some concerns in the community that often this committee um, in the past has rubber stamped our budgets and not really changed much and just gone along with administration. So I wanted to make a point that, at least in my opinion, um, even if we don't change anything in this budget, I think we've had opportunity to. I think we've had very clear and transparent discussions and updates since day one with our current administration and superintendent. And it's been a very different process than in the past. So if it appears that we, if in the end we ultimately um, don't make significant changes to this, I, I saw that needed to be said because it is. I, I don't believe there's any element of, of what is called rubber stamping by the community going on in this year. Um, we've had very thoughtful discussions. We had a retreat. We've had more data than I've had, I think, cumulatively in my previous years on the committee. And um, I, I appreciate that. And I, I think even though there's a lot of things that I personally would like to see that are not in here, um, I understand where we are, and I think it's um, it's where we are. Um, so I'd like at minimum to be able to find what we have. Um, you know, if circumstances change and we end up with additional funds in some way, then we can have a secondary follow-up discussion about how we might want to prioritize spending them. We like to do with them, but um, I just wanted to to make a note that at least from my perspective. Um, even if we didn't change anything in this budget, I think it is a much different scenario than in the past in terms of the thought that's gone into it and the amount of discussion we've had throughout the year. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Linda? So I just wanted to note that Mass General Law 71B, Section 3A states that a school committee with 4,000 or more children enrolled in this school system shall appoint a person to be its administrator of special education. Um, so we're required 
to have an administrator of special education. Um, and I do think that having an administrator of special education, as the superintendent said, uh, will help to um, equalize, uh, make more consistent the uh, special ed services across the district. Um, and I think also I certainly do hear the concerns, and I share the concerns about um, not having enough special ed positions, but hopefully a special ed administrator would help us to, um, to build a case uh, for those special ed positions over time, so. Is there any other discussion? George? Yeah, just very briefly, um, I, well, I'm very impressed by the work done by the new administration, and uh, I'm very optimistic about the commitment to, well, improve things uh, qualitatively. I'm much less optimistic about the work of this committee. I already spoke about this at the last meeting. I don't want to talk very long, but I think, well, we, when we look at this presentation originally created by the Business and Finance Subcommittee, it talks about owning mistakes, digging out, and making necessary systemic changes. I don't, I don't see anything concrete and specific uh, behind this, and uh, I, I still believe that in terms of the financial uh, operation, this committee has largely abdicated its responsibilities in terms of caring for the strategic health and goals of the district, but not the administration. Linda, then Laura. I just wanted to note that, uh, in fact, the district has hired an external firm, which has provided us an extensive report with suggested suggestions for improvements in our business practices, and that the administration is currently um, implementing those recommendations. And I do think that that shows that this committee um, does support moving forward to improve our, our, our operations, our business operations in the district. Laura. Um, so I've heard some um, some questions from our community members um, around the concerns uh, with our literacy program at the elementary levels. And um, based on the textbook plan that uh, Deputy Superintendent presented uh, daily, presented to us, um, there was a plan to uh, purchase uh, new uh, literacy curriculum uh, for next get started with that process and that is embedded in our in our budget um, the second phase of that is put off another year and that's the the upper grades um, looking at that here and I see that it would cost uh, an estimate of um, $260,000 um, if that were to be added to this budget uh, what would be the the budget implications to, to accelerate that process um, clearly it's not in here, so you, you're not recommending it for this year, but I'm just, I would like to just circle back to see what would be the cost uh, to this budget and, and to the towns, uh, and ballpark it, for, you know, I'm not looking for, you know, to this, you know, hundreds place, but, um, but what would be that cost if we were to make that amendment tonight? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so we did, ju I just looked quickly at the town of Holden, it would increase their assessment to 5.3 percent instead of the 4.9 whatever it was um do you want me to do all of them did you want I, all of them i think that that helps me just kind of get a ballpark in increase in the, in the budget yeah. and I, I as i recall the the town of holden specifically had asked for um for an assessment that was um around four um, and we're we're around four now so I, I suspect that that pushing that um, forward would, would would put us in a um, I'm not gonna make that motion is what I'm saying yeah. I, just don't, don't, I, I can't think it's an up. opportunity to and I was saying this to Jim earlier that if grant money came our way that'd be a great use of grant money to move forward the program that we might not have expected mm -hmm. yeah and budgeted for I mean, one of the things we've benefited from the last couple of years with Deputy Daly is she's been able to use that program. And right now, the program we're seeking to replace Fontes and Pinnell is a priority for the state to move on from. And so I think um, the other piece of that, and it's partly why we're requesting um, consideration of a director of curriculum, is one of the things we were fearful of when uh, Orrin Jane put together a plan, and Jane can speak about it more eloquent can, elo eloquently than I can, but even trying to support implement implementation the way we're currently staffed would be a challenge beyond the, the three grade levels. Now that may change. 
um, depending moving forward if we're able to do that. Um, you know, I can I would share that it is a high priority for the district to move on and replace that program. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Lauren. Um, in the past, what I like to call quiet cuts were made in this district with the goal of a tighter budget. Um, but I think that this budget really brings our district from the era of quiet cuts, you know, to the area of uh, student-centered needs as the main driver in budget building. Um, and it just makes me think of, you know, some of our teachers at the budget hearing stated that this district was in crisis, but when they saw this budget and saw the presentations given by the administration that they had hope. And I, you know, I have hope too, and I, I think we need to affirm that hope of our teachers and add to that hope um, by approving this budget tonight, because I only, I think it's just the start of um, really great things for our district. Okay. Um, if there's no one else, George, again. Well, as a relatively new member of the committee, could somebody tell me what those quiet cuts would be, some examples? Anna? <laughs> um, how many years ago did we cut librarians? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, Eleven a long time. years. So a lot of times in districts, my finding is this is also my first year in the school committee, but being a teacher in districts and following this stuff for a while, I tend to find that a lot of times when things get cut, it is very hard to put them back because at the point where they are cut, um, every year things get more expensive and then those positions become more expensive and they fall further down the list. So for example, librarians were cut. I'm sure the intention was to put them back in and they're still not back in. Um, so I'm sure other people have a lengthy list, but there are definitely areas that are, that are missing that still haven't returned. Lauren? Through the chair, there was, I remember a French teacher that retired that was then French was lost from a school. I remember um, a strings teacher that was that retired and was never added back into the budget so then strings was lost from the school. Those are the kind of things that were just never kind of vocally stated and were cut without being um, addressed. Uh, okay. okay, are you responding to George or did you have another question? Okay, I have Malaya first then. Malaya? Um, my one other question, and I, I've already asked this in other forums, but um, just to clarify for the rest of the community, um, if the administration could speak to, um, that we have, we built this on the governor's numbers, and traditionally they do go up from that, but we have no idea what will happen with the Senate and the House. And I, I believe there's a little, not really, I won't say room, but is there a plan for what happens if the final numbers happen to be lower in some areas than the governor's number? I don't, I don't think I anticipate that happening, but I just wanted to ask again if you could clarify that because we have a lot of newer members who haven't been through this process. So if our allocation is lower, is that what she's asking? Yes, I, I believe we can lower, yeah, I believe we can go back and then lower assessments if needed to, but I just was I just wanted to make sure that that was covered. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at the, um, we're trying to be, um, you know, very methodical in looking at um, our class sizes and positions that would potentially be added. And I think we would go through that process and add the positions that had the greatest need. We have a couple we have a couple classrooms that could be up to 30 or 29 if the predictions hold at this point. And so I think. You know, one of the things about the positions we are recommending is it would allow us to try to strategically look at where is the greatest need, where is the greatest impact in terms of class sizes, and we, we would follow that process um, if we didn't have the funding that um, we're hoping to get at this time. Okay. Matt? Just a question through the chair. Um, since we've had the public hearing, have we heard back from any select boards, any formal um, statements or opinions on on any talents and how they stand on our budget? I have not. I, I, I have not that I have. Um, no. Thank you. Okay. 
Is there any other discussion? Sherry, I just wanted to make a comment, and, and that is that I really thank everyone for their diligence and for the transparency. Um, I'm new to the school committee, but it's really been uh, quite, uh, quite a process and quite an eye-opener for me, and I really appreciate everybody's efforts. Um, I also want to mention that I see this really as a starting point that it seems like after many years of not really knowing where we are financially, we finally have a much clearer picture. And I'm sure that as the year progresses, we're going to be looking at more opportunities, grant opportunities, working with different organizations, maybe outside of, of the school department and the district um, to really enhance what we're offering our students and help us out with our fiscal responsibility. Thank you. Jenna. Um, just really quickly, Jim, I know that um, if we hire these eight teachers, particularly a couple in Dawson, I know that you mentioned that means that um, we will need to use the art and music rooms for those classrooms. So then Dawson would be having art on a cart. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do know this has happened before and we've moved away from it, which is encouraging. And while I agree we need the classroom sizes, um, I just want to make note that we are losing a certain level of education in other areas in order to reach those. Um, and I just want to make sure that we will be talking with Holden about uh, getting the towns to really look at our size issues and getting some sort of plan in place for that because I don't just want to approve a budget that moves them to a cart and then not say that we have a plan to get them back into a room. So I don't know if, I'm sure you don't have an exact plan, but I just wanted to put that out there that I'll be looking for that to mm -hmm. hopefully happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, and I say that and I, um, I shouldn't say it, um, I'm not trying to say it nonchalantly when I mentioned it, and I can tell you that um, Dawson in particular, um, that's not the principal's desire and I know she's looking for other opportunities, other spaces in the school that potentially could be used um, because I would, you know, I, I, uh, we presented to the uh, Holden FinCom last night and that's one of the things I tried to express them to them. That's, that's not the experience kids are getting elsewhere in the district and that does have an impact um, and they're not going to be able to get the same programming. Um, that you would get if you had a dedicated art or music room. Um, and both of those are a huge part of the Dawson experience, if you talk to Joy. Um, and so, understood, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a big need for the district in a couple different towns. Okay. We need to figure out space. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, let's go to a roll call vote. <coughs> Dennis, yes. You're yes. Lavoy, yes. Kaminsky abstain. Woodland, yes. Govartham, yes. Lombalil, yes. Kershenbaum, yes. Sam and Garrett, yes. Brennan, yes. Scott? Sunstrom, yes. Sue? Valentine, yes. Carl? Otmar, yes. Malia? Gustafson, yes. Thank you all. Dana? Norway, yes. Asma? Lovely, yes. And the chair votes yes. The motion passes. Thank you all. Thank you. I would now accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Linda, seconded by Kamara. And a roll call vote, please. Dennis, yes. Mayor, yes. Mavoy, yes. Kaminsky, yes. Woodland, yes. Gavard, yes. Blanc, yes. Kershbaum, yes. Sammy, yes. Brennan, yes. Scott? Yes, you got. Dana. I'm going out of order now. Sorry. Norway, yes. <laughs> Sue. <laughs> Yes. Carl. Upper, yes. Malia. Yes. Asma. Yes. Chair votes yes. Meetings adjourned. Thank you all.